Hi, my name is Mark Schroeder. I'm Associate Professor of Medicine at Washington University in St. Louis, and I will be presenting on the role of Janus kinase signaling in graft-versus-host disease. Graft-versus-host disease occurs after allogeneic stem cell transplant and can affect 25 to 55% of patients in its acute form and up to 40% of patients in its chronic form that usually occurs within the first two years. The incidence of graft-versus-host disease is impacted by HLA match, donor source, and transplant conditioning. Life-threatening graft-versus-host disease can occur in 15 to 20% of patients. And acute and chronic graft-versus-host disease are inflammatory disorders that are initiated by antigen-presenting cell activation of alloreactive T cells. Janus kinases are intracellular signaling components that function downstream of many cytokines and signal through STATs. There are four members of the JAK family, JAK1, JAK2, JAK3, and TIC2. JAKs are key regulators of immune cell development and function. These cells include dendritic cells, macrophages, neutrophils, T cells, and B cells. Preclinical studies and recent clinical evidence suggest that JAK inhibition can disrupt graft-versus-host disease without negatively affecting graft-versus-leukemia. JAKs are important effectors of all phases of graft-versus-host disease by transducing inflammatory signaling downstream of cytokines and regulating development and function of immune cells, including antigen-presenting cells and T cells. The first observation of JAK inhibition abrogating graft-versus-host disease was in the setting of a JAK3 inhibitor used to prevent acute graft-versus-host disease in a mouse model. Subsequent studies have implicated both JAK1 and JAK2 based on the following observations. Inflammatory cytokines are essential for graft-versus-host disease, and interferon gamma is elevated in patients with graft-versus-host disease. A number of groups have reported that interferon gamma receptor is increased on activated T cells. Interferon gamma is made by both donor T cells and recipient tissues in the transplant setting. Interferon gamma, if eliminated from T cells, results in more acute graft-versus-host disease in mouse models. And so to investigate this apparent paradox, initial research efforts focused on genetic elimination of the signaling pathway of interferon gamma through knocking out the interferon gamma receptor in mice. One of the first observations that suggested signaling through JAK1 and JAK2 associated receptors is critical for the development of graft-versus-host disease was made in an interferon gamma receptor knockout mouse model by J. Bok Choi and John DePerzio. Using interferon gamma receptor knockout T cells, they were able to show that T cells lacking the interferon gamma receptor prevented graft-versus-host disease while T cells that lacked the ability to produce the cytokine interferon gamma actually made graft-versus-host disease worse. The reason for the protective effects of interferon gamma receptor in these mouse models was initially thought possibly related to the effects on regulatory T cells. In fact, regulatory T cells that lack the interferon gamma receptor proliferate normal they also suppress T cells normally. But when placed in vivo, they were not able to traffic to GVHD target organs. This suggested that it was a trafficking issue in interferon gamma receptor T cells that was involved in decreasing graft-versus-host disease. In an extensive search of what chemokines and chemokine receptors may be involved in the signaling from interferon gamma receptor, Dr. Choi and his group performed an extensive flow analysis of activated T cells, and the only chemokine receptor that was differentially expressed in interferon gamma receptor knockout T cells compared to wild-type T cells was CXCR3. This chemokine receptor is expressed in T cells and its ligand CXCL10 is overexpressed in patients with acute graft-versus-host disease. 
interferon gamma receptor regulates the expression of this chemokine receptor on activated T cells and thereby affects their trafficking to GVHD target organs as shown in this figure with interferon gamma receptor knockout T cells lacking trafficking to the gut and interferon gamma receptor knockout T cells fail to increase expression of the chemokine receptor CXCR3 when activated. In an attempt to target the interferon gamma receptor and because there was no blocking antibody available at that time for the receptor, this group targeted JAK-STAT signaling. Interferon gamma receptor signals through JAK1 and JAK2. Therefore, JAK1 and JAK2 inhibitors, momolitinib and ruxolitinib, were initially studied in this mouse model and phenocopied the effects of interferon gamma receptor knockout T cells by preventing expression of CXCR3 on activated T cells and by prolonging survival in a major MHC mismatch transplant model. In addition to these initial observations implicating JAK signaling through interferon gamma receptor, off-target effects were also suspected based on the following observation. Interferon gamma receptor knockout T cells when transplanted in a major MHC mismatched mouse model partially abrogated graft-versus-host disease, but when these T cells were combined with the JAK1, JAK2 inhibitor ruxolitinib, graft-versus-host disease was completely abrogated, suggesting that the JAK1-2 inhibitor ruxolitinib was also acting outside of the interferon gamma receptor pathway. These effects have been hypothesized to be on antigen presenting cells or potentially through affecting alternative cytokine pathways such as IL-6, interleukin-12, and interleukin-23. There may also be off-target cellular effects on neutrophils, or on the expression of chemokine receptors within GVHD target organs. Based on these initial observations and our understanding of graft-versus-host disease, there are several additional notes to be made when it comes to JAK and graft-versus-host disease. Graft-versus-host disease can be broken into three phases, and in all of these phases, JAK signaling is at play. The first phase of graft-versus-host disease is initiation of inflammation. This leads to activation of antigen-presenting cells. JAK signaling is essential for the activation of antigen-presenting cells and for the function of dendritic cells. Immediately following allogeneic stem cell transplant, inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1, IL-6, interferon gamma, and TNF-alpha are high as well as damage-associated and pathogen-associated molecular patterns. And these inflammatory cytokines signal through JAK-STAT pathway and activate antigen-presenting cells. This activation leads to antigen-presenting cells trafficking to regional lymph nodes. The second phase of graft-versus-host disease involves the activated antigen-presenting cells priming the alloreactive T cells. The interactions between antigen-presenting cells and allogeneic donor T-cells that lead to T-cell activation is a JAK-dependent process. JAK signaling regulates T-cell activation, proliferation, and function, primarily through transducing the cytokine signals. These cytokine signals are required for T-cell activation and signal through JAK1, 2, and 3. Studies have shown that inhibition of JAK1, 2, or 3 decreases T cell production of inflammatory cytokines such as interferon gamma, IL-17, and IL-2. JAK1 and 2 inhibition reduces alloreactive T cell proliferation and can alter the ratio of regulatory T cells to T effector cells. Recent evidence also suggests that the common gamma chain cytokine receptor that signals through JAK1 and JAK3 is required for CD8 T cells to mediate acute and chronic graft-versus-host disease. 
antibodies that block this comma gamma chain or knockout of JAK3 in donor T cells cause less severe graft versus host disease. The final phase of graft versus host disease development is the activation of the adaptive immune response and subsequent tissue damage. The activated immune cells that migrate to target tissues, namely T cells, cause tissue damage. Their migration to these target tissues is dependent on chemokine expression that we know is regulated by JAK signaling. And JAK inhibitors can affect these chemokine receptor expression patterns on T cells. Chemokine migration is important for antigen-presenting cells, T cells, and signals through JAK. JAK1 and JAK2 are required for normal migration of dendritic cells, macrophages, and T cells. Finally, terminal effectors of T cell cytotoxicity, such as granzyme and perforin, are also affected by JAK inhibition. JAK inhibition is also being studied in chronic graft versus host disease. Chronic GVHD is mediated by naive T cells differentiating to IL-17 secreting T cells and follicular T helper cells. These cells drive pathogenic germinal center B cell reactions and monocyte macrophage differentiation. A key characteristic of chronic graft versus host disease is fibrosis. And fibrosis is mediated through macrophages and the release of TGF beta, as well as pathogenic B cell activity. Inhibition of the common gamma cytokine receptor, which signals through JAK1, JAK3, limited fibrosis in a chronic GVHD model. In addition, JAKs are key regulators of macrophage activation. And finally, interfering gamma promotes germinal center B cell expansion, and this can be blocked by JAK1, 2 inhibition by ruxolitinib and partially blocked by JAK1-3 inhibition via tofacitinib. In conclusion, there are three phases critical to GVHD development and all rely on JAK stat signaling in immune cells. JAKs are important for intracellular transduction of many cytokines that regulate development and function of immune cells involved in GVHD, including dendritic cells, macrophages, T cells, B cells, and neutrophils. The initial finding that interferon gamma receptor knockout donor T cells were associated with less GVHD in major MHC mismatched models led to the early investigation of JAK inhibition to treat GVHD because interferon gamma receptor signals through JAK1 and 2. Disrupting interferon gamma receptor signaling by genetic deletion or pharmacologic blockade in T cells affects CXCR3 expression and alters T cell trafficking to GVHD target organs. JAK signaling is also critical for the feedback of inflammatory cytokines that regulate cellular differentiation and the activation of antigen presenting cells. The extent to which JAK, either JAK1, 2, or 3, is involved in each phase of GVHD is an area of ongoing investigation. This concludes this episode, and I would like to thank you for your attention. <music>